fellow alchemists, welcome back to another tutorial. And this time we're going to be a little bit different. I've gotten a couple of requests for somewhat of a more of a um, like complete app from beginning to end. And um, I've also gotten uh, quite some interest about Flutter. Uh, we were also planning to do some Flutter uh, tutorials. And I thought that this would be a great opportunity to show you a couple of things. One is in this first video, what we're going to show you is how I usually make my uh, um, Phoenix apps, how I kind of structure them. Uh, and also in the next video, I'm going to be setting up Absinthe to create an API. And then I'm going to actually consume that API by building a Flutter app to consume the API. So kind of a multi-app slash kind of end-to-end uh, -end app uh, that we're going to be creating. And so uh, without fur any further uh, ado, as they say, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is, of course, I'm just going to do a very, very simple app. Uh, I think I'm going to change it a little bit in the future, but for right now, it's going to be very, very simple. And this is going to be the typical to-do app. And so the first step is we need to actually create our uh, beginning model. And how I do that is because we're not going to be having uh, any kind of Phoenix uh, way to use the app necessarily, uh, we're going to be using Absinthe, like I said. So in this first app, what we're going to do is we're going to make a, um, it's going to make our domain model. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use a Phoenix task to generate our uh, context. There's a command Phoenix gen context. And our context will be called to do's. And we're going to be creating tasks in those to do's. And the name of the table will be called, of course, tasks. And I'm going to make a task very, very simple. And that's going to be name, it's going to be a string. And completed will be a boolean. So very, very simple. We may expand this in the future, but this is just to kind of get you the idea. Once we do that, you'll see very quickly, we're gonna have everything that we need. The first thing I want to do is I want to actually um, change our migration. Now, why is that? Let's go ahead and let's take a look. Of course, uh, we want the default to be false for completed. When you make a task, it should be false and we don't want it to be null. And I also want to make sure that our task name has to, has to, has to have a string in there. It cannot be null. And with that, I'm going to just go ahead and run our migration. And what I did forget also <laughs> is we're going to have to actually create our database, and then we can run our migration. And then what I'm going to do next is, uh, because I said I wanted to kind of show you guys how I would do things, as you can see, I'm not using the typical editor, because normally I actually I use IntelliJ. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a task in here to run our test cases. So we use the Elixir mix x unit, we call this mix test. And we don't need any test arguments. So I'm just going to create this. And I'm going to play our tests. So in this case, it's going to run through all the tests, make sure everything's working. Perfect. So everything's working fine, it seems to be. It's exactly what we want. Um, the next thing I want to do is most of the way that the tests are set up is actually pretty OK with me. but. I do want to make things a little bit easier. Um, and one of those things is to actually move this text fi task fixture out into a separate module. So that way we can use it within our absinthe uh, tests. And so what I'm going to do is in my support folder, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this uh, fixtures. So I'm going to create a fixtures module define this is called uh, Flutter API because this is not part of the web part so I don't need to say Flutter API web called fixtures and in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to inline this 
So cut this, remove that, paste this here. And this one is also here. So I'm going to paste that over there. Remove this. And then I'm going to cut this out, paste this into here. Now you'll see this is not really uh, available. So what we need to do is we just need to add in the Flutter API dot part to bring that in here because we're not going to need to alias that, just one thing. Uh, and then the next thing I'm going to go through, I'm going to paste and cut out and paste this across. So for our update, go to here, paste this into here. That's enough for our invalid. Again, cut this, paste in line. Not a big deal. So we can cut all this out. Um, let's see, to do, this is fine. And I want to cut this out and use this at the top. Now, this is kind of okay, right? We'll see everything over here. But another thing that I like to do is you see all this stuff is being repeated, right? I could basically pull this out into another block. So what I like to do is make a new describe block. The one above here is just called tasks. So I'm going to say this one's going to be describing a text created. So after it's already been created, we do our setup. In this case, our setup will be returning an OK tuple and a task. And then we can call back into our fixtures. So that is uh, Flutter API fixtures, uh, task fixture, fixture. And then what I can do is just grab all of these that automatically has a task fixture, okay, which is basically most of them. And pull them to here. Now what else I can do is, because I've already created that above, what I can do is say task, task, and I'm going to copy this, paste, 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 and now we erase, 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 very tedious, right? Sorry, almost made a mistake. Erase. So now we've kind of made things a little bit easier, right? Move some, some redundant code around. Now I run my tests. You'll see they still pass. Now one last thing I like to do, which is I have about, I think about eight cores on this machine. And so I feel I should run these basically asynchronously across. So we're not to waste time. This one I can also run. Uh, my error views, these are already running asynchronously, asynchronous, asynchronous. So now 95 milliseconds, if I run it again, it's probably gonna be a little bit faster, 92. Not a lot faster, but in time it will make more sense. So this is how I basically structure my app. Uh, as you can see, one of the first things I do is I try to make a fixtures module. So here's my fixtures module. I pull that fixture stuff out. Um, I try to separate things which don't require, you know, basically the, uh, the creation stuff into one describe block. If there needs to be something already created, I would just put that into another block, set it up with uh, a task already here, sorry, with the model, and then just pull that in, make things a little bit easier. At least that's what I think. So tune in next time for when we actually start to integrate Absinthe. And uh, we'll be doing testing again with Absinthe and show you how we also test. So this is Alan from Plangora. Please subscribe if you haven't. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye. Hi. Please feel free to ask us any questions about Elixir, Flutter, or anything else in programming. Here is our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We will answer your questions every Friday. Ya mantai ge duk man all. Yo wenti ji da wen wo.